Hello, I'm Heather at Uminami Farm. It is one week after the summer solstice and we are crazy busy right now, but we just wanted to stop and give you a little update about what's going on. There is lots of things happening right now. We are now um, into our third week, I think, of planting greens outside. We've also got a couple of rows of daikon planted outside, um, gobo, beets and carrots um, outdoors as well. They might not have sprouted yet, but we did those just last week. Um, for today's update though, what I think I'll focus mostly on is the summer crops, i.e. the fruiting crops like eggplant and cucumber and those kinds of things, just to show you where we're at with those. We don't have a lot of those yet, but we're hoping that they will be gradually making their way into the box program and Fujia and these sorts of places. So let's start with some of the eggplants. Um, last time you saw them, they were probably still in the seedling greenhouse next door. This is what they look like now, about... Oh, super off the top of my head, I want to say a month after transplanting-ish. Something like that anyways, around one month after transplanting. They are looking nice and bushy and beautiful. And I'm actually really glad we caught them at this stage because last year around this time, I remember in the video saying a few words about our eggplant pruning method, but the thing is that they were at too late a stage for me to really show you how we do it from the beginning. Whereas now, most of these plants weren't pruned yet, and so I can show you from step one what we do. Now, if you're able to read Japanese, um, you're likely to find this method or something similar to it described in some Japanese um, gardening books or gardening magazines and this kind of a thing. So if you're able to read Japanese and you want details like that, um, seek out something like this. I'll show you the general concept right now though. So, the plant looks really bushy but actually it's got a kind of internal structure to it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to look for the first flower or the first fruit of the first fruits available. Now in this case, the first flower died. I don't know why the first flower died, but there's the first flower, it's dead. Um, you can see how at that point of the first flower, the plant kind of splits into two. You can see how it was coming up here and it would sort of give, give a branch, give a branch. Now here it actually kind of splits into two fairly strongly. Let's see if we can find another plant that illustrates this as well. That one's similar, the first flower also died. Anyways, um, yeah, I don't see one with a fruit yet. For some reason these guys were not so happy and the first flowers generally died instead of making a fruit. But it's off now, but I've still got this here. You'll see that directly below this fork, there's also a strong branch here that looks quite promising. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You can take off all the branches below that fork, or you could also keep this one. Um, probably what we'll do is we'll just start at the bottom for now, and I'm gonna s decide when I get here whether to take that out or not. So basically, what I wanna do is I don't even need any scissors because They'll actually, if you just give them a little twist, they'll come out right from the base. And it's actually better to do this than to cut them because if you cut it, then these two little buds here would form other shoots and you just have more work to do cutting them out later. Whereas if you twist it out like this, it kind of, kind of takes the whole point out and away. Now, I can, and I know it looks like you're really gonna hurt the plant doing this. Just be gentle so you don't rip the bark too much. Like if it starts to look like the bark's gonna peel away, just try twisting it so it breaks off more in place without peeling the bark kind of a thing. Ideally, we would have done this a little while ago. Um, sometimes there's a lot of things that just sort of slip us by, but um, there, look at all that we've taken off. So I mean, we ideally we would have done this a lot sooner so we the plant wouldn't have already invested so much in these branches. Now, I am super tempted to keep this third branch here. Um, however, the farm owner asked me to take out the third branch and only keep two, so I'm gonna be a good farm manager and do that. That being said, I think part of what I wanna say is if you wanted to keep this third branch, you could. It really depends um, I think one of the goals in, oh, there's a caterpillar there. That's interesting. I don't even know what kind of caterpillar that is. Um, 
one of our goals is to make the plants easy to harvest. And the more crowded the plant is, the harder it is to harvest, the more likely it is to that a fruit will get pinched between two branches and turn out with a weird shape. And so because of that, we're going for a fairly open concept with the plant. That being said, if you're a home gardener with only like one or two plants, it's still a good idea to do some pruning, but you might be able to get away with keeping a third branch like this and having a bushier plant overall. All right, I will take this out if I can. Now see, this one does not want to come, but there we go. Taken out right from the base. And we can get fancy and take out some of these lower leaves that are looking kind of tired. I guess I'll keep these two because they still look fairly healthy, but these will come off later. Yeah, and there we go. That is the first stage of pruning. There is um, a second and st third stage of pruning that we'll go through as we harvest the fruit and so on like this. Maybe if I have a chance, I'll talk about that later when we're hopefully harvesting lots of eggplants. But for now, what I'll just observe is that sadly, we didn't get a fruit off that first flower, but there are a number of other flower buds on here, which are looking a little bit promising. I don't know if it's hard to see, but there's like a little tiny, 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 tiny purple eggplant waiting to become something down in the bottom of that calyx. I love these plants, just I love all the purple on the stems. I love like even some of the fuzz on the leaves is kind of purple sometimes. So anyways, that's the that's our that's how we do our eggplant pruning. And we really hope that there will be eggplants in the box program and at Fujia and Lifestyle and places like this very soon. So here we are in our cucumber greenhouse. Um, today we are planning to plant a second greenhouse of cucumbers, but this is our only cucumber patch right now. I think we showed you in our last video how we had had some really nice results using shade cloth in our seedling greenhouse. And so I was really inspired to continue experimenting with shade cloth for some other crops. For example, in this greenhouse, we had been concerned it would actually be too hot in here for the cucumbers. So we went through and put the shade cloth up and so far it seems like they're pretty happy i think they look like they're growing nicely we're starting to get some fruit um yeah we we um just went through the other day and started pruning them i won't go into details but basically what we do is we take off all the side shoots on the lower uh, 30 centimeters or one foot of the plant here's a little one that i can pinch out right now and again, that just makes it easy to see what's happening when we harvest. If we let it get all bushy down here, then we're stuck like sort of scrambling around on the ground at harvest time. This way it's a bit of a cleaner look and so it's easier to find the fruit. And then as we go up the plant, any side shoots that, that emerge above one foot from the base, we just prune those to two nodes. And this one's actually at the perfect stage. So you can see here is the main stem, never want to cut that. Here is the leaf, the leaf axle has a shoot coming out. And so here's the first node, the first place where a leaf emerges, second node. And now what I want to do is cut this just above that second node. There we go, like that. And so now that way, with this variety, we get cucumbers produced on the side branches. And so I want to keep it, I want to keep two nodes so we get cucumber production. But if we let it get longer than that, they'll tend to really hang down and make a more tangled plant where it's again, hard to find the fruit and stuff like this. So yeah, so that's what we do. Um, again, if you're doing this at home, you can make things bushier and messier if you want to, because you, you, you might have more time per plant to go looking for the fruit. For us, we really need it to be, you know, fairly easy when we go through to find things quickly so that we can get the fruit picked while it's still cool, get it, you know, packed up for you guys and move on to other work. So here we are in the pepper greenhouse. Um, we were, as I said, really into experimenting with shade cloth. This is the second year we've done shade cloth on our peppers. It worked really well last year, so we're doing it again this year. I was really happy with how the pepper plants settled in after transplanting this year. 
many years we've actually had a lot of pepper plants die not long after transplanting because they would just it was it would be really weird you'd you'd think they'd be fine but they'd start wilting and this kind of a thing so we'd give them more water and they just end up dying anyways finally one year i emailed an extension officer with one of the seed companies we were dealing with with um, johnny's selected seeds and um, told them about the problem and they what they actually said to me was that one problem that peppers can have is that because the root system isn't actually that strong they're really prone to root rot and so by watering and watering and watering we were actually making the problem worse and causing them to have more root rot by over watering them and so what we've been really careful to do more recently is we water the peppers in when we plant them with the norm with our normal fertilizer mix and then after that, um, we just didn't water them at all. I just would come and check every day, make sure nobody's wilting, make sure everything's fine. And we have, since transplanting them a few weeks ago, we have used the drip irrigation like just one hour at a time or so, a couple times to water them, but we really haven't given them much. And you can see how much they've grown from seedlings more like about that high kind of a thing. So they're still on the small side, but they are looking really nice, starting to have some fruits. Here's a nice shishito here. That is the first fruit on this plant. It's actually very interesting. The um, pepper plants have a structure very similar to eggplants, where around the place where they make their first fruit, the plant kind of splits into two, or sometimes into three. Yeah, this one, this one splits into three, this one splits into two. Um, when they get a little bit bigger, just like we did with those eggplants, we'll go through and take off all the side shoots down here just to make everything easier to find the fruit. And what I mean by that is from this place where it forks into two or forks into three, we'll take off all the side branches down this way. What else did I want to say about peppers? I think that was about it. I think that was about it. There might be more later. All right, thank you for watching. Um, I'm gonna get back to some other work shortly. I will just say one quick thing about the peppers we just looked at. One of the reasons why we could give so little water is because we have the plastic mulch on there. And so if you do, if you try this at home, um, just be mindful, please, that there's a lot of different factors there, the ventilation, the shade cloth, the plastic mulch, helping to reduce how much water the plants are needing. All right, like I said, thank you for joining us today. I will go do some transplanting and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.